Hi there, me again, your humble neighborhood friendly stroke assaulter. So we're going to go through another topic about a stroke. We're not going to work through a letter of the alphabet. We're going to work on pain after stroke, um, not specifically headaches, right? So there's a specific um, pain-related disorder called central post-stroke pain. That's central post-stroke pain. Now, it's been around for about... 150 years. It's not a new. It was identified about 100 years ago. So it's not something that is new uh, in the literature or the understanding. There may be newer treatment options for you because of it. Now, central post-stroke pain, or CPSP, say that with a face, yeah. <laughs> no, uh, can be described as constant, moderate, or severe pain caused by damage to the brain. So your stroke has impacted your thinker. Now this is irrelevant. Oh, is it a mid-brain stroke? Is it a left brain, a right brain? What lobe was it in? Was it brain, like, right? The, the manner, mechanism, and method of your stroke, kind of irrelevant here. So what you're looking at is, after your stroke, your brain doesn't understand the messages to from the central nervous system, right? So, and some of that is in response to things like touch, how warm things are, how cold things are, and other stimuli, right? So for those of you that have central post-stroke pain, that'll be fun. Uh, gonna attempt not to stutter by the end of this video, and I'm sorry if I do. I have aphasia, I had a stroke. Repeat after me for those in the crowd that have had one, I've had a stroke. <clears throat> Can't shoot almost anything, doesn't it? <clears throat> so some of the some of the side effects of having post-stroke pain could be you don't understand how warm or hot things are. Um, you inadvertently burn yourself, right? Um, or how cold things are, right? I live in Canada. Uh, I'm either in the south end of northern Ontario or the north end of southern Ontario, so it can get pretty cold. When winter comes along, I don't know how it's going to impact yet because I had my stroke in June, and the snow is not going to show up until it shows up, let alone stick around. So, you may have a constant or chronic pain. The pain may come or go. You may feel it on one side of your body or another. You may feel it on the side of the body that was impacted by the stroke. So, for me personally, I had a left brain stroke, which means my right side is impacted. So, I may feel it on the side that is impacted. You may feel it on your face, your arms, your legs, your torso, trunk, your back. It may feel like a burning sensation, a stabby sensation, jab, uh may feel like a cactus is being dragged down you. There's many ways this could feel. And because I've now listed things that actually contradict themselves, it, it may be constant or it may come and go. You may feel it, again, may, on the side that you that is impacted by your stroke, or you may not. You may feel it on your face, arms, legs, wrists, hands, tarsals, trunks, up, down, right? It may be aching or not. It may be burning, or not. It may be sharp, or not. It may be stabbing, or not. It may be itching, or not. Right? There are, unfortunately, a lot of that sounds like a lot of duality, right? Which may cause some healthcare providers to either think it's all in your head. <laughs> you want a stroke? It's in your head. Stroke joke. Hey, come on, stroke folk. That was funny, right? Or, they may think you're now drug seeking, right? Or they may think you're fucking cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, right? Um, so depending on how mindful and how much of an advocate and how knowledgeable your healthcare team is about post-stroke conditions, such as central post-stroke pain, central post-stroke pain, right? So because of these symptoms, right? You may feel nothing when a sharp pin is on your body, right? Or warmth or cold is being applied to your body, right? Um, you may experience normal touching. Now, I'm not talking like good touch, bad touch, or good touch, dirty touch, right? So this is not a time to tell me on the dolly where the bad man touched you, okay? Um, you may let's say your favorite uh, fabric was um, cashmere. Or merino wool, something really, really soft, right? Uh, that can become painful, discomforting, unpleasant. 
So something that you used to enjoy wearing, um, except for corduroy, the 70s are over. No one wears corduroy, okay? Put that out there. Um, so, except for old men with two bays that have gotten a date off like geriatric tinder, right? And they might be like a corduroy sports coat or corduroy pants. Right? But no one in the right mind um, wears corduroy. So at that point, you know, the fabric becomes difficult to wear. It's painful to wear. It's un unpleasant, right? You don't even want it touching your skin. You don't even want to put your hand on it to put it on a hanger or put it in a drawer, right? Um, you may have your pain exacerbated by emotional stress, by cold, by movement, um, the breeze, right? And this sounds ridiculous, but you may no longer enjoy the sensation of a fan blowing on you. Right? So you live in a climate where fans might be a necessity. Um, you can't handle that anymore. Um, you may have your pain limited to a specific body part or body area. And because of that, you may discontinue actively wanting to use that body part. So I'm going to use me as an example, and, and not that I have this, but let's say my right arm is impacted. And because of that, I'm, I'm right hand dominant. Right, so I'm my my primary hand to go to is the right hand. Um, mine's out of gutter. I totally know where half of my friends just went. Yeah, moving on. Um, so it was kind of an advantageous that I had a left brain stroke, which means I have to use my right hand anyways, just to function. Because if I'm going to chop vegetables or you know open anything, I'm going to want to try to do it with my right hand. Great. So I was kind of forced to get around that. But what if I always had pain between my shoulder to my wrist, right? Um, at that point, if the pain is constant and there's not much that can lessen or alleviate that pain, well, you might voluntarily actively discontinue using that limb or that portion of your body, right? Um, that may then cause muscle weakness. Uh, and then, right, because you now want to stop using that part of your body, you now will have a harder time with your recovery and rehabilitation journey. Now, and then the last thing to look at is drugs. Right? So you may be put on uh, pain lessening drugs. Those drugs may be narcotic or they may not be narcotic. You may find that the drugs you've been given and the dosages you were told to take them might not be the best solution so now you're taking more of them you may then decide to you know that's not doing it and you may then make a conscious decision uh, to move to a non-pharmaceutical street drug right something that you go see some sketchy fucker around the corner and you know he gives you a little baggie of whatever and because that pain is going to drastically impact your quality of life, you are now at a higher likelihood for post-stroke depression. So if you haven't seen the video I've made on post-stroke depression, you need to go, if I could figure out how to put the link like there, I'll do it. But if you could go there, uh, you might find the post-stroke depression link. And if you don't, well, just click on the video. Moving on. Right. Now, also, because you may now have physical pain, which may limit range of motion, which may limit your use of the limb or part of your body, uh, that may now put added stress and strain on familial and friend relationships because now you're going to have to be more dependent upon them. Okay. Now, there's various things your healthcare provider can do. Is post stroke pain treatable? Yes and no. I know I just said both. Right? So, first off, the best way to do it is to keep a, a journey uh, or sorry, journal or a diary of when you get pain, how you get pain, where you get pain, what were you doing before the pain, right? So you can start to draw some co correlation between if I do this, I get the pain, right? Or if I do that, I get the pain. Or this is the pain I've gotten. This is where it is. This is where it is on a scale of one to 10. And to give your clinical team something to work with. So you're just not walking them blind. I need drugs. Right, because if you just walk in and say I have this, then you know that's nice. Give them some, give them some specific for instances. Like for instance, 
I was in the grocery store. I did this. For instance, I had to take a basket of laundry downstairs. For instance, I went to pick my child up. For instance, you know, and, and the more specific you can be, the better it's going to be for you to understand your pain and the more effective you're going to be in communicating your issues to your clinical team. Right now, some of that pain, just going to rehab is going to solve that pain. Right. So just going to physiotherapy. Right. It's going to help with some of that pain. Uh, some of that pain may be caused by a mental health situation. So again, just going to see a counselor might help with some of that pain. Going to your occupational therapist might help with some of that pain. Now, other things that may help it, uh, you need to watch out on your painkillers, depending on where you are on your stroke journey, you may or may not be allowed, or it may or may not be suggestible that you use a lot of anti-inflammatories, right? Um, muscle relaxants may or may not help. Uh, massage therapy may or may not help. Uh, Botox may or may not help. Uh, CBD oil may or may not help. Um, uh, those TENS electrical stimulation units may or may not help, right? And, and I'm being very vague, and, and I realize I am being vague, and there's a reason for that. Every one stroke is completely unique to the individual. So what may or may not work for me may or may not work for you. So that's why I'm saying may or may not, right? Now, the last thing, right, when it comes to living with uh, post-stroke pain, right, and I mean things other than a headache. Right, so if you have the central post-stroke pain, right, at that point, some of the tips you can use uh, to live with it is if you have a limb that is immobilized or paralyzed because of it, um, you may want to prop it up in such a way, right, position it in such a way uh, to reduce discomfort, right, um, and that way you're not kind of leaning on it. Um, you may want to try things such as hot or cold baths you probably want to reduce your tight clothing so you know the wearing the tie probably not the best idea um, you want to do things that reduce the potential of pressure on that limb or portion you may want to try heat packs um, you know you're going to probably spend some of your time lying other lying down and better on the couch and you may want to position pillows and whatnot so that you're you're more comfortable um, for certain people, meditation may work or hypnosis. Uh, for other people, you're gonna you're gonna find activity is the best thing for you. So you're gonna, you know, try to be as active as you can. Be that continue going to physiotherapy, trying to do things beyond what your physiotherapist has given you. Given you, um, there may be like a mall walking club in your area. Now I know if you're the under 50 set <clears throat> and you start talking about um, mall walking. It's a lot of blue hairs and track suits. I get that. Um, but they're your folk, right? Because if it's like a stroke-related group, they're your stroke folk, right? So you're going to have to go hang with them for a while. And just keep in mind, chronic pain can beget depression, right? The chronic pain can beget anxiety. And anxiety begets depression, and depression begets anxiety in your post-stroke world. So if you're having chronic pain and that pain is causing anxiety like oh fuck i'm supposed to go do this stuff with my friends and i know it's just a barbecue and i know it's just three or four hours in the backyard you know i'm just anxious to get out of the house or you know and then that can lead to depression or whatever the case may be um at that point if you notice you are suffering through uh post-stroke anxiety or post-stroke depression please immediately reach out to your healthcare practitioners right and again, I've done a video on post-stroke anxiety. I've done a video on post-stroke depression. I'm going to see if I can make them pop up up there. We don't know yet. Um, and honestly, the last thing is be honest. All the communication that you have with your clinical team needs to be direct, needs to be realistic, it needs to be open, and it needs to be honest. Right? They cannot provide you the help that you are going to need right unless you are completely open and honest with them right you can't hold anything back there's no back pocket in it. there's no keep a card back right there's no like wait for the other shoe to drop um you can't do that that's just completely unreasonable if you're going to have an issue with your stroke um the issue is going to be because you didn't feel the need to include someone that's a healthcare practitioner in your recovery circle right whatever that may be. So like if, if for me, 
I when I went to the stroke team for my you know two month checkup, I had a laundry list, and I had some people, friends that I trust, help pre prepare that for me. So when I went down to them, I had this laundry list of hey, these are the things I want to work through. These are the issues that I'm currently perceiving. Where does that leave me in your opinion, right? And, and I'm going to let you formulate that opinion on your own because I, I don't know where this sits. <clears throat> so just be open and honest with them. Right? So if you happen to be going through the central post-stroke pain, which is not just your normal headaches, post-stroke pain can be very debilitating. And the great thing is because it's pain, it is invisible. <clears throat> People around you just won't get it. They, they, they won't. All you can do is educate them and help them understand so they attempt to have the ability to get it. And it's going to become frustrating. And that's where you might want to go see F is for frustration or I is for invisible. Right? Um, I'm going to work through, again, the letters of the alphabet. And that's, that's the thing we're going to work on. But if you happen to notice someone that's going through their own stroke recovery journey, right, um, or that you know someone that's supporting someone going through that post-stroke recovery journey, wherever you are in that journey being you're currently in ICU or you've just gone to stroke step down <clears throat> or you've, you've been released over to a rehab and recovery facility or like me, you happen to be back in your own home. Please like, share, subscribe, right? Share this with your family and friends. If you happen to want to see me cover a specific topic, hey, just leave the comment down below or you can reach me at strokeassaulter at gmail.com. I say again, strokeassaulter at gmail.com. And if you happen to notice either in yourself or someone around you, the signs or symptoms of a stroke, right? That being facial droop, uh, the inability to raise both arms equally effectively or at all, the inability to smile equally effectively or at all, slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate word usage for situation or context, aphasia, <clears throat> um, inability to stand unaided, general body weakness or weakness in one side, please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.